So hello, everybody. Welcome to MCEN 3017 Circuits and Electronics. My name is Bill Newhall. I am the instructor for this course. And so we're going to jump right in and talk about an introduction to the course today. Uh, we'll talk about the course format. We'll talk about the upcoming assignments, the course web page, which is Canvas. Um, so take a look at that. If you haven't seen the Canvas page, be sure to jump on there and, um, and take a look at what's coming up. Uh, we'll also dive into the technical material toward the end of this lecture session, and uh, we'll get started. So my office hours are normally right after class, so come join. Uh, if this isn't a pre-recorded lecture, then uh, I'd love to have you join and chat. Uh, if you have any questions about the course, about the material, or just want to stop by and listen in or chat with me or anybody else. Um, also, normally during class, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to uh, unmute or shoot me a chat, and I'd love to have questions during class. So we're going to dive right in with the course introduction. And what I normally do with this course is uh, we're going to start out with slides. It's going to be very slide heavy for the intro material. And then we'll work into uh, working on the whiteboard and example problems. And so you'll be watching slides, taking notes. We'll have a mixture of that. So let's start out with the course introduction. Uh, welcome to the course. I always like. Um, asking whenever I'm taking a course, who is the instructor? Who is teaching me? So let me introduce myself and some of my background. I am an electrical engineer by education, by profession. My specialty is radio frequency electronics. So I'm used to working at, at high frequencies, well, all the way down to DC too. Um, I have 25 years of experience, probably about 27 now, working in, in industry, developing uh, electronics boards, uh, electronics products, electronics systems. And so I'm here teaching you because I believe teaching is a calling of mine. And I have been teaching for about 20 years now in, uh, in college level courses. And I also like mentoring and teaching in industry to, to young engineers and old engineers, as well as being a student in industry and learning. And so I work with mechanical engineers nearly every day. I'm usually working on systems. And so I see the aspects and the topics of electrical engineering that a lot of mechanical engineers would like to learn and maybe hadn't learned or don't remember uh, from school. So I like to take these topics that I hear about in industry, that I hear about from mechanical engineers, and bring them into this course so that you'll be prepared to work with larger engineering teams. So my intent with this class is to leverage that experience in electrical engineering and engineering in general, and to help you learn uh, uh, circuits and electronics fundamentals that, that I think are relevant. And I like to bring in practical examples um, of topics uh, from industry, um, from analysis, uh, even from what I've learned in class that people want to know, bring them into this class, especially those that mechanical engineers and non-electrical engineers will likely encounter. And so this class is, uh, the, the lecture is remote, the lab is in person, and I'm enthusiastic about that. I think there are benefits to both modes of teaching. Um, so I like using the latest resources of, of Zoom and in-person and having office hours uh, in-person and via Zoom. I think it, it works out pretty well, especially when you have to miss a class and um, uh, watch a recording. So that's who I am. Uh, let's dig into the course goal and, and the starting point of the course. The overall goal of this course is to develop your abilities in analysis and design and test and troubleshooting of circuits, both analog and digital circuits. So I like to start off with, with what I call a survey. It's really a self-survey to think about your background and think about uh, the starting point and where we're going. But I, I like I'd like you to think about, have you had any experience with electrical concepts? And I think the answer is yes. You've, you've had a physics course, you've talked about charge, you've talked about current, you've talked about voltage. We will review those, but that is a, a starting point where, where I think you are um, in this course. 
you've probably had experience with working Ohm's laws problems. Uh, you've probably worked with Kirchhoff's laws like Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, you've probably worked with resistors, Ohm's law, um, as well as capacitors and inductors. And so we will review these topics, but this is where I think the starting point is for most people who are taking this course. And so what we're going to do is build upon this with other topics that are really relevant to electronic systems, electronic projects, um, for even non-electrical engineers. We're going to talk about uh, Thevenin equivalent circuits. We're going to talk about impedance and phasers for AC circuits. We're going to jump into some electronics topics like transistors and operational amplifiers, and then dive into digital topics like logic and microprocessors. And all of these subjects are meant to build up your understanding of analysis, design, test, troubleshooting, working with um, electronics and electronic systems. So that's where the starting point is, and that's the course goal, and that's where we are headed. So if you'd like to contact me, email me at, at uh, my email address, stop by office hours. Those office hours are generally right after class. Any changes are posted on Canvas. And uh, what I would ask is that when you post or you ask me technical problems, I will show you the Slack page link. So I'd like to do that via Slack so that everybody can see questions and answers and everybody can contribute uh, from the class to that, um, as well as see uh, all the contributions from me or anybody else. Uh, uh, it, it, um, versus doing it via email where, where um, you know, we would have uh, technical information shared just one-on-one. -on -one. I like to get that out to everybody so everybody can see the problems and solutions. We have four teaching assistants for lab, so you will meet your teaching assistants in the lab. Uh, please see the, the Canvas page for uh, their emails and office hours. They will be posted uh, within the first couple weeks of class. So there's the class webpage. The textbook is Hambly's Electrical Engineering Principles and Applications. Be sure to have the, the seventh edition for homework problems. So there are other earlier versions of this book. This is the latest version here, the seventh edition. Uh, but the homework problems are different. You can read earlier editions, but you, when you're assigned book problems, it's important to get those out of the seventh edition. There is also an international edition, um, which itself has different editions. Th that might work for reading. It probably will work for reading. The sections numbering might not match up, but the homework problems will be different. So be sure to get the homework problems out of the seventh edition of Hambly, um, either yourself or find someone with, with that version, that edition, to get the problems. So the course format, we are going to, of course, do lectures. Um, this is where we will concentrate on material and example problems. So I will, I will teach material. I will work example problems, either show them in slides or mostly work example problems uh, on the whiteboard. And I will lead that. You will have quizzes, which are short questions on fundamental topics. These quizzes will mostly happen at the beginning of the course. They're short. Um, they're meant to prepare you for the homework problems <clears throat> so that the homework problems can prepare you for the exams. But most of these will be toward the, the beginning of the course. That will lead you into homework where you will practice more complex problems compared to the quizzes. But the quizzes, the homeworks, and the lectures will prepare you for lab. And in lab, you will... Uh, design circuits, you will construct those circuits on a breadboard, you will use test equipment uh, to test those circuits and troubleshoot. And then we will have three exams in this course, and those exams will be based on class material and, and lab material. Okay, I like to show a course roadmap. The course roadmap is, is just that. It is a map looking ahead and behind to where we are going, where we have been, and what you, what you can expect from a high level. So this course covers 
what I would consider to be three or four electrical engineering courses, but topics that are re relevant to mechanical engineers and non-electrical engineers. So one of those areas of study, one of those courses would be circuits. So from the circuits course, we're going to cover basic electrical theory. We're going to look at analysis of DC circuits. So this involves resistors, um, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's laws, a review probably of what you've seen before. Then we're going to move into transient circuits like RC circuits, RL circuits that involve capacitors and inductors. Uh, and then we're going to move to uh, AC circuit analysis. So we'll look at handling capacitors, inductors, resistors uh, in circuits that have sinusoidal sources. Then we're going to move into what I consider the electronics part of this course. And this is usually covered in an electronics class for electrical engineers, we're going to talk about semiconductors. We're going to start out with diodes, move on to transistors, work some of those circuits. And that sets up the basis for talking about uh, a useful component called an operational amplifier. So we will use operational amplifiers as well amplifiers, um, linear circuits, and also uh, circuits that compare voltages. So you can have circuits make decisions for you. That leads us into digital systems, which is, again, another topic, uh, usually another course. But again, I'm taking the relevant topics, what I think apply to mechanical engineers and non-majors, non-electrical majors. We're going to talk about digital logic and digital systems. I'll give you an introduction to that. And we'll talk about microcontrollers. So if you've ever worked with an Arduino, uh, you've worked with a microcontroller. So we'll, we'll talk about how microcontrollers work and some uh, relevant topics on how to use them. And then we're going to move into motors, sensors, and electrical applications. So we're finally going to get to uh, a mechanical topic in this course. We're going to connect the electrical world to the physical world with motors and servos. So we'll talk about DC motors and stepper motors. Then we'll talk about uh, sensors and sensor interface circuits and uh, and then applications of everything you see here toward the end of the course. So that is the whole roadmap of the whole course. Each one of these topics has uh, more specific topics, but we will dig into those. And I will usually bring up this roadmap um, as, as we change topics during the course so you can see where we are. So we are, at least during lecture, in a virtual classroom environment. But, but please, even though it's virtual, um, even though you're remote, please ask questions, you know, shoot me questions during the, ch uh, during the lecture in chat or just unmute and, um, ask your question, contact me if there are any problems, seeing anything, hearing anything, if, if anything's not working out, I will be happy to help try to fix it. So for the lecture, these are the online resources. We will use zoom for interaction for lecture and office hours. And that will be live. We will use Canvas as a source of assignments. There's a detailed schedule posted. Sometimes we deviate a little bit, but largely you can you can uh, look at the, especially the dates of the exams, the dates that homeworks are due, um, the dates of the topics we will cover during lecture. And there's other course info on Canvas. We will use Slack for um, asking technical questions. So for homeworks, for quizzes, for exam preparation, for lab. Um, be sure to check out Slack, ask your question. I get notified. I get there as soon as possible to answer questions so everybody can see. And uh, you may even find answers there relevant to the question you have uh, about any assignments. And feel free to, to chat about those topics and uh, contribute. If you have an answer, um, if you have a way to help someone, Go ahead and please contribute and help others. Um, the only thing I ask is don't just go post answers, right? We all we all we all know I think where that line is. Posting answers is not in the spirit of helping others. We really want everybody to work through problems so that uh, you know the point of the homework and the point of the quizzes is, is is to learn so that we're prepared not just for the exams but but so that you can take this knowledge forward into your career. Um, we will use clickers um, during lecture, I will ask clicker questions occasionally, and you will respond to those questions during lecture. 
with your Clicker app. And be sure to register for MCEN 3017 with your iClicker account so that you can respond. And I'll talk about how that uh, iClicker, those iClicker responses contribute to your overall grade. Let me know if you have any problems seeing or hearing the class material, including any general video or audio problems. Let me know if there's a screen out of focus, like the whiteboard screen or, or Zoom window is blocking anything in your view. We'll get that straightened out, okay? Because sometimes I don't, I don't see always what you're seeing exactly, so I'd like to know if you're having any problems. So let's talk about the lecture. So the lectures will be held synchronously via Zoom. If you do miss any lectures, um, you can watch the recorded lecture. Uh, I do recommend attending the live lecture. There's just something about it where you can interact and you can work along at the, the speed I'm working problems um, as examples. Uh, so we will work circuits and electronics theory and example problems. Um, this will be through whiteboard talks and PowerPoint presentations and clicker questions, as I mentioned. And I will record these lectures. And uh, mostly, uh, nearly all the time, I've had success in recording and posting the actual lectures. There have been some glitches every once in a while. Uh, these recorded lectures will include video and audio of, of live questions asked during lecture. So the homework is available on the course website. It is due as posted on the website. Please check the due date and the due time. So there are due times associated with each assignment and I post the solutions right afterwards. So uh, that's why we have to stick to the due time because of the solutions are going to be posted. So you have access to those immediately. And, and generally I do not accept uh, late homework, um, so so please get your homework in on time according to the due date and the due, to due time. Resubmissions after the due date or due time will be considered late and will invalidate earlier submissions. So if you, if you submit a homework before the due time and then you resubmit after the due time, that assignment will be considered late. So please check the due time. Don't do that. And then follow the instructions about submission. So you'll see the instructions on Canvas and in the homework assignment sheet. For homework, I encourage you to work with others. This is permitted, I encourage it. Um, this lets you come up with different ways to solve a problem or observe different ways to solve the circuit's problems. Um, and so you can see that that there are many ways to solve problems. You'll see the different ways. Maybe one way is easier, one way is harder, but I like to have everybody see that. But in the end, please submit your own homework. Okay, so when you submit your homework, it's gotta be your own, it's gotta be your own work, uh, but, but definitely work together on this and make sure you understand the solutions because that will be important for the exams and going forward in your career. And keep your supporting work for your homework to study for exams. Okay, so that's that's important. Quizzes, quizzes will emphasize the basics. Most of the quizzes will begin will be given at the beginning of the course. Um, these are to be worked individually outside of class. So you should be able to work these, what I consider to be basic problems. If you have any questions about those, stop by office hours. I will be happy to help you with those quizzes. Like homework, quizzes uh, are not accepted when they're late, and just like homework, the resub any resubmissions after the due date and due time will be considered late, and earlier submissions are just wiped out. They, they won't be accepted. Okay, it keeps it consistent for everybody. Exams um, will be held during the semester. There are three exams, including the final exam. The dates for those exams are on Canvas. Those are targets. They may change due to weather impacts, uh, change of the course, uh, change of pace of the course. So, so be sure to keep an eye for any updates. If there's any major change on 
an assignment due date, I will let you know via a Canvas announcement. Uh, but, but pretty much those dates are what we're going to try to stick to. Please try to arrange any travel or vacation plans. Um, if you have to be away from campus or you can't take the exam, actually, it doesn't matter if you're away from campus. The exams will be held remotely, and I'll explain that as we get closer. Uh, but if you're unable to take an exam during the exam period, please let me know and please try to arrange any um, travel or vacation ar around those so they don't conflict. So lab. Lab is a great part of this course. Um, it gets you hands-on with electronics. It gets you hands-on with test equipment. It builds your troubleshooting skills. So you are going to build and test circuits in lab. You're going to start out with basic circuits, and then you're going to move to designs of your own and making your own selections of electrical components or values of electrical components. You will work in teams of three at each bench in the lab. Uh, you will pre uh, perform design work prior to the lab period in the form of a pre-lab. And then you will build and test your circuits during the lab period. If you do not have a computer, uh, I should say if you don't, do not have computer access um, and access to the ITLL, which I think this is about everybody with, with some few exceptions, you will need to take a 30-minute ITLL orientation prior to the first lab. Um, Prior to the first or second lab, I highly recommend taking the orientation prior to the first lab. There is a website posted by the ITLL. Here is the link that gives you the times of orientation. So this is going to give you access to the ITLL after the regular business hours. So you can get in there and uh, work on any lab material that you need to. Um, it'll also give you access to the ITLL network and computers. So every lab, you should bring a USB memory stick uh, for capturing oscilloscope waveforms or other settings of test equipment. You should bring a, a phone or a camera, a phone with a camera, to take photos of your circuits and measurement values. This is going to be important for documenting your work in lab and inserting your data, your photos, your screen captures into your lab reports, just like we do in industry. We take lots of pictures, we take lots of data, we put them into some kind of lab report um, or engineering report. And and uh, so this is going to be important. So bring bring a camera, bring a, bring a memory stick. You'll typically need that to capture data. Lab attendance is mandatory. Um, so it, it, it is important, especially since you have partners that need your support to attend lab. And so if you absolutely need to miss lab, contact me and you will, you'll need to make up that lab on your own. Um, and we'll, we'll work out arrangements for submitting your, your data and your lab report separately. The ITLL has really good test equipment. They have, uh, um, oscilloscopes, power supplies, function generators, um, all available at each lab station. So you you will have scope probes and test of uh, test equipment available in lab for your use. Um, anything that's loaned to you, like locker checkouts, and I don't think there's anything else actually loaned out anymore. But you'll need to return any loaner equipment at the end of the course. Um, you're going to get an electronics parts kit. The, this parts kit will consist of discrete electronic components and integrated circuits, and you'll have a, a breadboard available to you. Uh, at this point, you're going to purchase one kit for each team during the first lab period. So we're, we're still working out the details. It changes every semester. Anything you purchase is yours to keep if you want to use that on um, future projects uh, at school or outside of school. Okay. Lab assignments. You will have a pre-lab due with and prior to each lab. Pre-labs are really important in this class for preparing you and performing the lab. The idea here is that 
the preparation work that can be done without test equipment, like design, like understanding what you will be building, that has to be done prior to the lab, um, should be done prior to the lab, so that so that you're ready to come into the lab and build your circuit and use the test equipment, because that's really valuable time in the lab. You have a couple hours to work with the test equipment, to work with your lab partners on a scheduled time, to work with the TAs, and uh, and the point of the pre-lab is to get you prepared for that instead of showing up cold and doing your design right there, because that eats up that valuable time. Okay, you will have access if you need extra time outside of the lab period after the lab period to finish up your lab. TAs will be available um, for uh, for office hours to ask questions, uh, but but pre-lab is important to get to, to getting prepared for the lab and then using the test equipment. Okay, this is like if you're a mechanical engineer and you have some machine shop time, maybe with a tech scheduled. And, and, and you know you show up and you're working with the tech and you're designing real time, right? That's that's a that's a waste of the available resource of a um, a machinist and a and a machine shop. So you you wouldn't do that in mechanical engineering. So I recommend not doing that for the electrical lab. So team members will work cooperatively to design circuits and ask answer questions on topics required or the lab. And so except for the first pre-lab, each team will submit one solution online, except for the first pre-lab, which, which has instructions on it. So I'll show you that. Submit any write-ups in Microsoft Word or PDF format. Um, and the pre-lab, like the homework assignments, like the quizzes, is due as posted on the course webpage. This is usually the night before you execute the lab. So please read the pre-lab, just don't scan for answers to the questions because like I said, you'll have to understand the lab before going in to the lab period so that you can efficiently work on the, the lab. You will be required to submit a lab report. Uh, the lab report shows that your design meets requirements. It's not creative, uh, it's not creative writing. You will record measurements that you take during lab and you will use your pre-lab work as the start of your design during the lab period, but you should record your final circuit and your final design in your lab report, even if there are any changes. Okay, I expect there will be any changes. We usually change after or during test because that's why we test, to find any deficiencies and correct them. Each team should submit one lab report via the course webpage. So don't submit labs individually. Each team will submit one lab report and submit those in Word or PDF format. Um, sometimes we get dot pages formats and we, we can't read those. We'll ask you to um, update that. Lab reports are usually due within one week of performing the lab. So take a look at those due times and there's a penalty associated with submitting the assignments late. For grading, um, the lecture assignments are graded like this. Homework is 15% and quizzes are 5%. You'll have lab assignments, pre-lab is 5%, lab is 15%, and then three exams that are 20% each. For homework, although um, homework uh, is not accepted late, one homework grade the lowest will be dropped and one quiz grade, one quiz grade will be dropped. I ask this, I ask, please use those for emergencies. Emergencies always come up. Something comes up during the semester where you're unable to submit either a homework or a quiz. So please save that provision for the times you cannot submit your homework or your quiz. Clicker questions. So clicker questions will be asked during the lecture. You will answer during the lecture. They will count as one homework grade. All of the clicker questions will count as one homework grade. And to get that full credit for a homework grade, all you need to do is answer during uh, at least half of the sessions uh, to get full credit. You don't even need to get the questions right. Okay, So if you answer during half of the sessions, at least half of the sessions, then um, you'll get full credit for the clicker homework grade.
All right, so recorded lectures. So my goal is to make lectures easily available while respecting privacy. So I'm going to post these. And this includes speaker audio uh, and video for the questions. So if you prefer not to have your video recorded or, or um, you know, shown, please keep video off. If you prefer not to have your name shown in the videos, when if you do ask a question, please do not list your name. Uh, when you join Zoom, uh, please do not show any identifying information if you do not want it included in the posted video. Um, if you ask, to, if you prefer to ask questions without having anything recorded in the video, please stop by office hours. I will talk as long as you want. We can talk about anything there. And I do not post recordings of office hours. So if you want to participate in office hours and see what goes on, then uh, please participate live and um, we can chat. But, but I don't post office hours videos. So my recommendations, please see Canvas for assignments and uh, due dates for quizzes, homework, and labs. Check out the PDF schedule. That's updated occasionally. If anything changes that is significant, I will send an announcement. Uh, see the videos if you need to review anything from a lecture that, that you didn't get. And if you have questions based on the videos, um, if you've reviewed the videos and, and something still is unclear, please stop by office hours. There are practice problems posted. Take a look at the Canvas page. You will see practice problems associated with a few of the topics that I think help to have practice problems associated. See the Slack page for tips and questions and answers. So we're going to work and discuss homework problems and quiz problems and exam review uh, with others remotely there and go ahead and contribute. And I recommend taking notes during the whiteboard talks. I will work the problems at a speed where I think you can take notes. I think it helps. I know it helps me to take notes on problems that are being worked live as long as they're worked at a reasonable speed. And it helps me remember the lessons from the examples. Ask questions during the lecture. Um, ask questions during office hours. Come by, stop, talk to me. I'd love to. I'd love to chat, and um, we'll get this material across. For upcoming assignments, so you will see pre-lab one posted, quiz one posted. It is under assignments in Canvas, not quizzes, uh, because it's worked as a regular assignment. And homework one is also posted. All right, you will submit answers answers to assignments using online forms. So when you click on the submit link associated with each assignment, that is either a, a quiz or a homework, uh, you will see this form. Labs, you submit reports. So that's different. But for quizzes and for homework, you will submit answers. And so you'll see a form that looks like this. Um, Confirm that your CU email is shown here, and um, and then li list the other information and your answers. And you should get a reply. So this is like your receipt for submitting an assignment. You should get a reply. If you don't get a reply, contact me. Something went wrong. But if you miss an assignment, you say you submitted it, and I say, okay, just send me the reply. Everything's good. Um, be sure to have that reply. Okay, and again, don't submit homework, please, after the, the due date and the due time that will be considered late. All right, so take a look at the uh, Canvas page. Take a look at the PDF schedule. Uh, please take a look at the, the syllabus and the assignments coming up. If you have any questions, um, stop by at the next office hours. Email me um, or post on Slack. So that was the introduction. Let's jump right into the course material. We're going to start the, the basics of circuit analysis. We'll talk about circuits themselves and circuit variables. I like to start off first with a little bit of motivation for why you should learn circuits, why everybody in any kind of engineering field um, should learn something about circuits. And it comes down to this electrical circuits are part of many engineering problems and solutions. So whether you work in product development or you work in research or you're working some other kind of uh, a program, even an academic program, it helps to have a background 
in the basics of circuits. And I like to say, not having an understanding of basic electrical concepts can be as restricting as not having an understanding of basic mechanical concepts like mass, force, and velocity. And so what I mean by this is imagine you're on a, a team developing a drone, okay? And um, there's lots of mechanical factors there. And so, you know, you have, you have a, a basic understanding of mass and force and velocity and weight. And, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about uh, the speed of a drone, you know, you're not thinking, well, velocity is the derivative of distance versus time. So what's that equation? I mean, you have a feel for it, right? You have a feel for, for speed, for velocity. And, and so that's the kind of understanding that I, th I think you have with mechanical concepts. And, and some of you may have that concept down with, um, or those concepts down in electrical engineering, like uh, voltage, current, power, energy. Um, if, if you don't, though, I'd like to build a better, stronger foundation in electrical engineering concepts with this course. And as well, have an understanding of the quantities, the numeric quantities that are associated with voltage, current, power. You know, for example, if you were on a team building a drone um, and, you know, someone says the, okay, the requirements for the drone, the velocity, the max velocity has to be, you know, 25 miles an hour. You'll say, okay, we'll think about that. I, th I think we can do that. If someone says the velocity has to be 2,500 miles per hour, you'd be like, well, that's exceeding uh, the speed of sound, that might be challenging, right? You know that's a big number. I'd like you to have the same feel for voltage, current, power. What are reasonable numbers, um, big and small? And and you'll get that experience, I think, through the practical problems in lecture and and especially in lab. What this is, going, this is going to help you do is work with electrical engineers on teams. It's going to help you work on combined electromechanical systems, right? It's going to help you work on uh, larger engineering teams or lead engineering teams when when you're leading a multidisciplinary team across um, different engineers, different engineering disciplines. And overall, just to have a, a larger systems knowledge to advance your career and make a, a bigger impact on what you want to do with your career. So let's talk about the basic application of circuits. Why do we use electrical circuits. We use electrical circuits to do work or to transfer energy, okay? That's not, not very obvious really practically what that means, but you can basically divide doing work with electrical circuits into two different categories. One category is delivering energy. So we use electrical circuits to deliver energy from one place to another. We light things, we heat things, we, we move things. That is delivering energy in different forms from, from one place to another. What might not be so obvious is um, representing information. That, that is actually doing work. You are doing work when you represent information or transfer information. So if you have some kind of system that senses, communicates, uh, stores information or, or controls devices, that requires doing work. It requires transferring energy from one place to another in, in order to do that. So when you think about electrical circuits and you think about their purpose, and you think about their usefulness, think about delivering energy and representing information, which includes doing computing. So let's talk about electrical circuits and schematics. Here is the actual circuit on a really old car, right? Here's a cartoon of a circuit. This circuit has um, headlamps, has a battery, has a switch. So this, this is a really simple circuit that controls turning on and turning off headlights in an old car. Well, what we usually do with the actual circuit, instead of drawing what I call a cartoon of the circuit, is we extract only the relevant electrical information, only the information we need into a circuit diagram we call a schematic. So here's a schematic. Um, this, the schematic consists of circuit elements. So here's a circuit element 
it's a 12 volt source. Here's the switch. Here are two resistances representing two headlights. In between those elements, we have conductors. Okay, so the lines connecting the circuit elements are assumed to be perfect conductors. So when you think schematic, think circuit diagram. A schematic is a circuit diagram in the context of electrical engineering. Generally, only the electrical characteristics are represented. So any kind of physical length, physical size, physical shape, placement, or orientations, angles of the components are generally not represented in a schematic, in a, in a circuit diagram. So we're going to look at a lot of these. And for these circuits on these schematics, in these schematics, we're going to be calculating values of circuit variables. So this class is all about working with three values, current, voltage, and power. And so whenever I say, let's calculate the circuit variables for, for a circuit, this is what we're talking about, calculating current voltage power, measuring current voltage power, or designing for, in lab, current voltage power to achieve some practical application. I will do my best to relate all of these to practical applications. Like when we talk about sources, I'm going to be mentioning batteries. Thevenin and equivalents, I'm going to be talking about interfaces to electronic devices. Sinusoidal analysis, the frequency response of, of speakers, and so on. Right? We'll talk about transistors and op amps and how they relate to computing, uh, digital logic and how that relates to um, microprocessors and microcontrollers and 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 motors, right? Voltage, current, and power, and how that relates to delivering power to a mechanical system through a motor or through a servo. Okay. So the takeaway is when we talk about circuit variables, um, think current, voltage, and power. So let's start talking about uh, current. This is the first circuit variable we're going to talk about. So current is the flow of positive electric charge. The units of current are amps. So I will always say amps or milliamps or microamps. The real unit is amperes. So if you have a wire, here's a cartoon of a wire, We've got a cross section of a cylindrical wire here. It goes off to the left and the right here. If I do something, to cause electrons to move. So we have negative charges um, as electrons. Here. Electrons are represented as, uh, or, or negative charges are represented as electrons here. If I do something to make electrons flow right to left, that is negative charge flow. In electrical engineering, we use positive charge flow as the definition of current. So if electrons move right to left, then we're saying positive charge flow is left to right as shown here. So we represent charge with this variable Q. And so if I draw a cross section here across the cylinder, Q is the charge through that cross section. It's the total amount of charge flowing through that cross section and units are coulombs. Okay, I, I will occasionally use the, the fluid flow analogy, which is treating charge like water or treating charge like some fluid. Okay, so if you had a pipe, imagine now we don't have a wire, we have a pipe, and I have current flowing from left to right. Uh, imagine fluid flowing from left to right through that pipe. Okay, that's analogous to charge. So the amount of current, not the amount of current, the amount of charge that flows left to right is Q. Uh, the, the, the amount of fluid would, would be represented with like gallons, right? So when you think coulombs, think gallons of water if you're visualizing fluid flow through a pipe and making that analogous to charge flow through a wire. Now current is flow. So this is the amount of charge. This is like gallons of water. What we're concerned with usually is flow of charge, which is called current. Okay, just like uh, flow of water would be in gallons per hour, gallons per second, whatever. 
electrical current is in coulombs per second, and we're going to call that amps. We've given that unit the name amps. So current is a flow. I is a current. Q is an amount of charge. Take the derivative, and you get current. So dQ dt, the flow of charge, is current. And that's the equation that represents that. Current is always defined using a reference direction. Okay, so if I have a wire, I'm not going to draw a cylinder anymore. I'm just going to draw a straight line to represent a wire. Okay, so if we have this wire, two points on that wire labeled A and B, and I have current flowing left to right through this wire, let's say that current is defined to be two amps. So it has a value, two amps, and it has a reference direction. That arrow there is the reference direction that's telling me which way the current is flowing. Just like if you had a pipe, you want to know which way the water is flowing. With electrical current, you want to know which way the current is flowing. All right, so if I have two amps from, from left to right, it's equivalent for me to say I have negative two amps flowing from right to left. Okay, so if I flip around the arrow, if I flip around that rep reference direction to the opposite direction, it is just fine to say I have negative two amps flowing in the opposite direction. That is just fine to do. The, the math all works out. So I want to point that out. Some, some folks are disturbed when they have negative two amps or when we get to voltage, negative two volts. Um, that's just fine. You, you don't have to flip around to switch to the direction of the reference direction to make your values positive. I recommend not doing that. Just, just work, with, um, work with the values you're given unless there's really some good reason to do otherwise. In addition to having these values like two amps, negative two amps, you can define variables with reference directions. So, so I1 is a variable that represents the value of current going left to right. There's the reference direction. And in this case, right, if I have two amps defined or negative two amps with the opposite direction, I could say, well, by observation, I1 is two amps. All right, I could define another variable I2 with the opposite reference direction. That's just fine. And so here, I2 would be negative 2 amps. You could say, well, the reference direction of this I2 matches this reference direction, negative 2 amps. So I2 is negative 2 amps. Or you could observe that, well, these I2 and this 2 amp definition, they have, they have opposite reference directions. So I2 must be negative of what this is specified, the value next to the opposite reference direction. OK. We can define current using what's called double subscript notation. So here's I with a subscript, subscript AB. So here's IAB. Um, IAB would be two amps because the reference direction for IAB matches the quantity with the same reference direction. Here's IBA. IBA is negative two amps. And so here's the decoder ring. Here's why I've chosen these subscripts as such. This is called double subscript notation. The first subscript, let's look at IAB. The first subscript is the point um, where the current is coming from. And the second subscript is where the current is going to. Okay, so IAB is the current from A to B. IBA is the current from B to A. So there's a way of specifying a reference direction implicitly um, using two subscripts where points are identified on a conductor or a wire. Okay, so you'll see this show up. That's called double subscript notation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this first lecture here. We will continue with the other circuit variables, uh, voltage and power, uh, starting with the next lecture. Lecture, lecture. So in closing, uh, thanks for joining class today or thanks for watching this video. Uh, check out the assignments and the schedule on Canvas. If you have any trouble seeing that, please let me know. We'll get you connected with, with that class webpage. See the Slack invitation. So, so look uh, uh, on the homepage of Canvas. You will see Slack 
um, a link for Slack, you will see an invitation link. You have to join within the first 30 days so I can get you uh, signed up for participating in those conversations. Take a look at the Slack workspace. There's probably nothing there um, right now. Uh, let me know if you see, if you have any problems seeing any of the lecture material or getting to any of the resources and um, take a look at the webpage for office hours. And I hope to see you there. So thanks for joining class and have a great day.